Hey, how's it going everyone? Today we're gonna to talk about how to load 35 millimeter film into a stainless steel developing tank like this one, and then on, onto steel reels or steel spirals, whichever terminology you choose to use. There are plastic tanks, that's a different method. I prefer steel. I could talk about that after. I wanna just jump right in and make this a quick video about how to do it. So to develop film without a totally black dark room, you need a changing bag. What I have is a Patterson changing bag and I have the large size. I like the large size because it gives you room to work. If you're doing it in the summer, it's kind of hot. It's nice to have that little space in there. So here's what goes in the bag. I have the tank with the two reels and the two tops. I like to put it all together and put it in so I know I have it. Bottle opener, scissors, and the film that you're going to develop. I put my arms in the bag. I make sure to, that the elastic, it's double the elastic that goes around your arms on your biceps. I make sure it's separate and not overlapped or anything so it's light tight. You know, same with zipping up the bag, putting down the Velcro, you have that bend so no light can get in there. One thing, you know, double check, make sure you got it right. So the next part I'm gonna show in, in the light, but obviously you're doing this without being able to see it. It takes a little practice, take some deep breaths, don't worry about it, you're gonna end up getting it right. That's why also I like steel. It's very hard to mess up. Anyways, I use the bottle opener and I slowly work my way around till I get an edge and start to pop the bottom off. Pull the bottom of the um, film canister off and pull the film out. Roll a little bit out and try your best to cut the leader off in the most uh, straight line possible. I kind of try and feel around and then do that. It just helps when you're putting it on in the next step. If it's straight, you can kind of makes it easier to tell you're getting it straight. So then you have this little, there's a little clip here and you'll find that there's a way that you like to do it. Some people like to do it with their thumb or their index finger. I find I switch back and forth between my hands. I don't know why. Anyways, you pull that and you want to curl the film a little and stick it in there. Then I try and feel the top and the bottom to make sure I have it kind of even in the reel. It's something I will take a little time with. If I haven't done it for a while, especially I'll double check. Then you're gonna to wanna to curl the film by pushing on it very gently and start to turn the reel. I like to keep my hand perfectly in line with the reel to make sure it's going on smoothly. After just a couple turns, I double check and I feel it to make sure it feels smooth from all the sides. If not, if you're not sure, go back, start again. There's no reason to rush it. Take a deep breath, start over. Once I feel like it's going smoothly and I just keep I just keep smoothly winding it, keeping my hands level. And then if I hear any kind of like, it sounds like a noise or like the film kinked, stop. I feel it because you're on the outside. You're not touching the emulsion. You're not going to scratch it and make sure it feels it's still going on smoothly. You could feel the outside of the reels too, because sometimes if it's off, it'll push up through those and you could feel something. If you ever feel anything on the outside, go back to where that point is and start doing it again. Just wind it all the way around. Once you've done it a number of times too, you'll start to get the feeling where like a 36 or a 24 exposure ends, 36 almost all the way to the end of the reel. So if you get to the end of the roll and you're already running out of space on the reel, you got something off. You're not, it's not in there right. Go back to where you find a point where it feels like it's kinking and start from there. When you get to the end, take your scissors, cut the, um, spool that the film is sticking on off. Make sure you smooth out the end. And then this is very important. You wanna make sure this goes in the bottom of your development tank. So it's always gonna be in the chemicals when you're developing. Put the second, the empty reel on top of that. Put the plastic top on, I put both tops on. It doesn't matter, the little one is not, doesn't keep it light tight, it's just to keep the chemicals in. But I go around just very, you know, you know you have it on, but I always just double check and make sure it's on there very good. So then you pull it out and you're ready to develop the film. I will put a link below to how I develop Kodak Triax. So there are advantages to both styles of developing tanks. When I was in high school, I used the plastic one once and you load it from the outside and it kind of had a ratcheting mechanism and a couple other parts that you have to put in there, the center piece and all that. It's been 20 years since I've touched one. 
But I actually didn't close the tank right and all that, and I messed up a roll of film. It was one that I had done this crazy hike during a field trip to get down and get a different perspective of what we were shooting than everyone else and had to rush back to the bus. And I was pretty crushed when I had exposed the film, when I turned the lights on and saw the tank wasn't closed right. After that, I kind of swore off the plastic ones and I've always stuck with the steel ones. I just like to be able to, you could always feel if something's going wrong, like I described in the video. Um, also with steel and 35, you don't need to use as much chemical because the tank is smaller and you only need to cover, you know, the one reel if you're doing one roll of film. The plastic tanks are a little bigger and so you're using more chemical. Since I use mostly one shot when I'm doing HC 110, I, I find that's a benefit. I feel like maybe if you were mostly a 120 shooter, you know, if you shoot medium format a lot, plastic might have that advantage. The chemical usage evens out a little bit there. And plus 120 is a little bit harder to get on the steel reels. This obviously isn't, this is only for 35. I have some of the 120s. But yeah, that I find it a little harder to keep it even and I spend a little more time on it. So if that's a concern to you, if you're a big medium format shooter, maybe plastic would be the way to go. I'll always use steel. I could swear by the fact that I could tell what is happening when it's happening. There's less parts, the, the tank's never gonna crack, none of the little pieces are gonna break. Also, steel doesn't need to be perfectly dry to get it on there where your plastic needs to really be dry or the film could get hung up. Some people say that even some of the chemicals can build up on the plastic. Not sure whether that's true or not, but just one more reason for me to stick to what I know works and what I can tell was working as I'm doing it. So that's just a quick short video on something that's kind of simple, but you just need to take your time and like anything else, practice makes perfect. It doesn't need to be intimidating. Just some deep breaths, put on some music when you go to sit down there and do it and chill out. Anyways, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.